Brucellosis, a bacterial disease caused by the genus Brucella, was first discovered in the late 19th century. The discovery is attributed to Sir David Bruce, a British Army surgeon, who in 1887 isolated the bacterium responsible for the disease from soldiers in Malta suffering from what was then known as Malta fever. This led to the naming of the bacterium as Brucella in his honor. The disease, which affects both animals and humans, was better understood following Bruce's work, leading to significant advancements in its diagnosis and treatment. Brucellosis, caused by the Brucella bacteria, is transmitted to humans mainly through interactions with infected animals or their products. The primary route of infection involves direct contact with the blood, placenta, urine, or other bodily fluids of infected animals. This form of transmission is particularly common among individuals working closely with animals, such as farmers, veterinarians, and slaughterhouse workers. Another significant route of infection is through the consumption of contaminated food, specifically unpasteurized dairy products like milk, cheese, and butter from infected animals. The Brucella bacteria can survive in these products, posing a risk when ingested. Inhaling aerosols or dust particles containing the bacteria is also a possible infection route, especially in environments where infected animals are present, such as farms, slaughterhouses, or laboratories. People in these settings might inhale contaminated air, leading to infection. The bacteria can also enter the human body through broken skin or mucous membranes. This typically occurs in individuals handling infected animal tissues or working in laboratory settings where they might come into contact with the bacteria. While relatively rare, human-to-human -human transmission of brucellosis can occur. This might happen through sexual contact, blood transfusions, or from a mother to her child during childbirth or breastfeeding. Vector-borne transmission of brucella, though less common, involves the spread of the bacteria through ticks or other insects. Preventive measures are crucial in managing the risk of brucellosis. These include wearing protective gear when working with animals, consuming only pasteurized dairy products, and implementing regular monitoring and vaccination programs for livestock. Such measures are particularly important in regions where animal disease control is less stringent. Brucellosis manifests with a variety of symptoms that may appear gradually or suddenly, and their severity can vary. A prominent symptom is fever, which is often intermittent and may become more pronounced in the evenings. Accompanying the fever, individuals commonly experience profuse sweating, particularly night sweats. A general sense of weakness and prolonged fatigue is typical, making day-to-day -day activities challenging. Musculoskeletal symptoms are also common, including muscle aches, back pain, and joint pain, which can be debilitating. Persistent headaches are another frequent symptom, which can vary in intensity. Many people with brucellosis report a decrease in appetite, leading to noticeable weight loss over time. Other symptoms that might be present include abdominal pain, coughing, and a general feeling of malaise. In some instances, brucellosis can lead to more severe or chronic complications. These can include arthritis, swelling of organs like the liver or spleen, and in rarer cases, involvement of the central nervous system, heart, or reproductive system. However, such severe complications are less common. The symptoms of brucellosis are often nonspecific and can resemble those of other febrile illnesses, making diagnosis a challenge. It's important for individuals who suspect they might have been exposed to the bacteria or who exhibit these symptoms to seek medical advice for accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Brucellosis treatment primarily involves a course of antibiotics, given its bacterial nature. The most effective approach typically includes a combination of antibiotics such as doxycycline and rifampin, administered together for at least six weeks. This combination therapy helps prevent the development of antibiotic resistance and ensures a more effective treatment. In certain cases, alternative antibiotics may be necessary, especially if the patient cannot tolerate the first-line antibiotics or if there are complications, such as involvement of the central nervous system. These alternatives can include streptomycin, gentamicin, or ciprofloxacin. The duration of antibiotic therapy is crucial and is often extended beyond the initial period to ensure the complete eradication of the infection. Shorter or inadequate treatment durations can lead to a relapse of the disease. Regular follow-up and monitoring are critical components of the treatment process. 
They help assess the effectiveness of the treatment and detect any potential relapse or complications. Blood tests are commonly used for this purpose. Alongside antibiotics, managing the symptoms of brucellosis is also important. This may involve the use of pain relievers to address joint and muscle pain and recommending adequate rest to combat fatigue. In situations where brucellosis leads to complications affecting other organs, additional treatments or interventions might be required. The complexity and variability of the disease underscore the importance of treatment being guided by a healthcare professional with expertise in brucellosis. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment are essential for a better prognosis and to minimize the risk of the disease becoming chronic or leading to serious complications.